Hi there, and welcome to this week's class. I've called this class Learning to See Like an Artist and Develop the Powers of Observation. So, what I'm particularly interested in this class is trying to teach you a little bit about the act of observation and how vital it is to becoming better at drawing and painting. So some of the things that I'm looking to cover in this class is saying a little bit about learning to look. And uh, this is, uh, there's more to this than meets the eye. This is the ability to, when you sit down in front of a subject, to train yourself to be continually looking at that subject to make better drawings. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about learning to see like an artist. And again, um, what does this mean? Well, this is, there's a particular way of looking at the world or looking at your visual experience like an artist. And it's somewhat different from how uh, most people um, look when they're learning to draw. So just to say a little bit about my own experience with observation and drawing. Uh, when I went to university, there were lots of different things that interest me about art. Um, but when I got my sketchbook out, most of the time I would be inclined to draw from my imagination. Um, I was interested in figure drawing and sort of comic book art. Um, and so I would uh, practice anatomy and I would draw faces and figures from my imagination. At the same time, I would occasionally get my sketchbook out and I would just draw what was around me. That might be uh, the room I was in or people that were sitting around and uh, just record little snippets of what was going on about me. So when I got back from university, I've said that I worked in customer service for a few years. Um, but at the time, there was still within me a great desire to get back into art, producing art, and learning more about how to be a, an artist. So at that time, I was faced with another decision. I was, I was sort of torn between all these different artistic styles. So what I did is I went back and looked at my old sketchbooks and the art that really sort of jumped out at me and um, the pieces that I thought were most successful were these pieces that were informed by observation of the real world around me. So one of the books I came across at the time was this book by Ian Simpson, okay? Drawing, Seeing and Observation. And it's the sort of book that you would find in most art schools, um, universities, that sort of thing. So it, um, it's quite a sort of scholarly, but it's quite densely written, I would say. Um, but it also has some amazing drawings in. What I took from that book was I sort of became clear about what I wanted to do as an artist. And I initially was very keen on just developing this ability to observe and draw from observation. So another one of the books that really inspired me at the time was Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And I'm not gonna go into that book in great detail on this course, but it is very useful for understanding a little bit about what gets in the way of our observation of the real world. So just to make a brief summary, the idea is that you have your left brain and your right brain. Uh, your left brain is more associated with abstraction, uh, language, and understanding the world through sort of symbols and um, sort of simplification. Um, the right side of the brain sees things more in terms of relationships, how things interact. Um, it's more intuitive and it's probably what we might um, associate as the more artistic side of our sort of nature. So. People have written quite a lot about this, but there's an idea that in our society, we tend to be more dominated by the left side of the brain. And how this affects us as artists is that we, when we look at the world and we try to draw it, what happens is we have a quick look and then we get our heads down and we tend more to draw from memory um, and symbols and a sort of simplified um, idea of the world things like, for example, eyes, nose, mouth, people. Um, even from when you're very young, you develop this sort of simplified language of what the world looks like. And that actually, even as adults, tends to interfere with our ability to observe. So part of our job in learning to draw is learning to observe the world with enough concentration and enough effort that we can actually override this tendency to simplify and sort of draw on memory. So there's a saying that uh, comes up with this, which is that uh, 
when you're drawing an apple, you should draw the apple, not an apple. And what that means is, you know, if you're drawing an apple, you need to really look at it. You need to see what is it that makes that particular apple unique. And you need to study it with enough concentration that instead of thinking of as just, it's just an apple, you see it in all its uniqueness, including the way it's lit, what it's sitting on, how the light's bouncing up into it. None of these things will come to you through memory and imagination. You actually have to observe the objects that are in front of you, and this will really make your drawings come to life. So there's a good anecdote about this that one of my students told me once, um, and it's related to the fact that when people start to draw, if they're drawing either from life even or from reference material, what happens is they tend to look at the um, look at their subject a couple of times and then they'll spend the majority of their time with their head down drawing from memory and imagination. Um, so in this story, uh, one of my students said that they had been to a previous art class and the teacher had actually noticed what was going on. And uh, this student of mine, she was working on a still life. So what he did is he actually picked up the still life and took it away while she was drawing. And she basically, she carried on for uh, five or 10 minutes or so before realizing that the actual subject had been taken away from her, okay? And so this reveals part of the problem. What we need to do is we need to train ourselves so that our eyes are continually flicking up. We basically know that the information is out there and not to be found through memory. And it's one of those things that uh, initially you won't be aware of it. You might not even be aware of the problem, but basically the more you draw, the more you can train yourself to continually be flicking your eyes up and uh, really observing what's in front of you. And just to say a little word about my background here, this is another Van Gogh drawing. And uh, after last week talking about Van Gogh being the patron saint of art students, um, I thought it'd be another good opportunity to just show you a Van Gogh drawing. And again, what you see here is a, a really engaged uh, observational drawing of the world around him. And uh, at the time, you know, we look back at it, it looks sort of really interesting because it's of a, a time that's long gone. Um, but don't think that going out and drawing the world around you now will be any less interesting in years to come. I say one of the great things about drawing from life is you're actually creating a visual diary of your actual experience. So those little notes, those scribbles, those drawings will actually have a value to you in years to come that might not be apparent on the day that you actually make them. Okay, so I've come over to um, Clip Studio Paint now, which is a program I've been sort of trying to get the hang of uh, for the last couple of months. It's a uh, sort of cheaper version of uh, Photoshop. Um, really good. It's great for artists. It's got some uh, sort of great things you can do with it, but I'm still just trying to get the hang of it. But I thought it'd be useful to, uh, to show you a bit more about what I've been talking about with observation. So the first thing we're going to do is just try and break down what that skill of observation is. So I've taken a picture of my uh, feet crossed here. And we're just going to talk through the process um, as if you were going to draw this and what it actually involves. So the first thing is, is that you look at the subject that you're going to draw and you perhaps if I draw on here, let's say this. OK, now you try to fix that line in your memory, okay? And then you look across at your page and you make something like the same mark, okay? Then what you do is you then go back and you, another, you have a look at another bit of a line. So let's say down here, okay? You try to fix that in your mind. And then what you're trying to do is you're actually, it's almost as if in your mind's eye, you are trying to, you're trying to hold that in your sort of visual memory long enough so that when you flick your eye back to the page, okay, you can put that down um, as accurately as possible. So, and you would go on. So we would go on here, we go here, we go here. We go here, okay, we go here, go here, go here, go here, 
Okay, so I'm speeding this up slightly and um, you would take more time. Okay, and then this comes down, that comes down, and so on and so on. So I'm not going to draw the whole thing here. Um, but this is, it's almost like you're, on, you're sort of mining your observed reality for information. Now, I say what happens with most people is, let's have a look, we'll get rid of all this, okay. So most people have a look at this shoe and then, you know, and then they start, start sort of drawing it like without really looking, okay. Now, as an art teacher, I've become, you can sort of become aware of the quality of lines when people aren't looking. So I'm looking a bit here, I say it's a hard habit to break, okay. But let's take, for example, these shoelaces. Now I've exaggerated it there, but that's the sort of thing that happens when you are, when you're not observing, okay. When you're really observing a subject, you will see things like this. So with the shoelaces, we come down here. Come down here, come up, come up, come here, here. And then we actually see this shoelace go into this little hole here and down like that. Okay, so down like that. Then this one comes out, comes back in. Okay, that comes diagonally down. And what I'm going to do here is that would come like that. So it comes down like that. And then it sort of folds around this side of the shoe like so. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you there is the fact that um, the generalized thing is you might do this sort of thing. Okay, that would be an abstract idea drawn from memory about what shoes look like. But when we're drawing, we're trying to get into the habit of noticing as much as possible. I say it's the noticing that makes your drawing interesting. So for example, we have this line come here. Okay, and then these, these two little bits here. So you would include that, you say. So you would have like that. and then round, okay, and that's where the shoelace starts. So at the end of the class, what I'll do is I'll set you some exercises for this week, but I want you to keep in mind that this is what we're really interested in, is learning how to look. Um, now, what happens is at first, you have to take my word for this, but your visual memory, you won't be able to hold a lot of visual information. So that's why I'm showing you lines like this. One, one, two, two. Okay. Now what you can do is as an artist, you will develop your visual memory so that you might actually be able to hold, say that whole sweep. you might be able to hold more and more in your visual memory. So you might not need to look up as much and as often, but initially you've got to train yourself to not be, not to be making up stuff, basically, not to be making up stuff without having observed it first. And then actually you're going back to check. So you like, say we draw this line, we draw this line. Well, you're going to check, is that at the right angle? Have I got that? So that's a bit steep, okay? So you would perhaps rub it out and redraw it or rub it out and sort of change it around a bit. You see, so it's good for your drawings to have corrections in them. Don't worry too much about rubbing stuff out. Um, so, you know, if you have to draw over the top to get the correct line, then, uh, you know, so be it. So this comes right here. Okay, and that comes right there. Okay, so that's what you need to do. You need to start engaging with this um, process of observation and actually just making it more conscious and more deliberate and forcing yourself to look as often as possible at your subject. Okay, so that's learning to look, learning to train yourself to look at your subject as often as possible. 
Uh, the next thing I want to mention is learning to see, okay? So I've got here a painting by Ewan Uglo, okay? And uh, he's a really good example, if you're not familiar with his work, of someone who was very interested in the um, act of observation. So you can see these little mark lines that he's left. This is what I was saying about you don't have to rub out your corrections. OK, all these little lines come from adjustments and measuring and comparing and just really becoming interested in observing your subject as accurately as possible. So he has some other ones uh, here. So this is another Ewan Uglo picture. And again, what you can see is on there, you can see the measuring and the mark making. OK, and this act of discovery. So this is what I want to talk about, learning to see like an artist. So I've just picked out some reference material here. This was from my uh, um, the talk I gave last week. I'll put the links down below for that um, of how to collect reference material. So this was a picture of Ipswich, OK? And I just thought it'd be useful just to show you this thing about how to start to, to see like an artist, OK? So what does this mean, OK? So what it means is, is that when we start off as artists, what we tend to see initially is we see things. So let's say we see something like this. OK. So we go around the shape and we see an object. OK. Um, and that's not quite what we want to be doing as artists. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to see things not as separate objects isolated from everything around them. We're trying to see how everything um, interacts with everything else. So what I mean by that is we see things like... OK, we see there's a negative shape there, OK? And we might see things like, so when we go to draw this roof, OK, well, we try to go along here and we can see that that roof is almost level with the top of that tree. OK, um, if we come down this line here, the roof, that takes us to the bottom of the tree. You see, um, so we're starting to use objects and we're trying to see how they relate to the world around them. So another example, let's see if we can find some others. OK, so when I'm finding this window, for example, I might bring that line up and you see that takes me to this chimney. OK, so that's a useful sort of marker. Um, what would be some other ones? Just having a look. OK, so we have the top of this. OK. And that meets our sort of square there. If we bring this down, when we're trying to find that chimney, we can bring that line down and then we can see that it sort of relates to where this door frame is. OK. So what I'm going to give you at the end of this, I'm going to give you some exercises to practice this, this particular way of seeing. What I do is I call this sort of triangulation. And what it, the idea there is, is that if you have a single point, let's say we have a point here at the top of this roof. OK, we can just focus in on that as a separate thing. But a more powerful way of drawing is to see how does it relate to other objects around it. So it relates to that object. OK, and that creates a, a sort of line. It creates a line like that. It creates a line like that. OK, so this creates, in this case, these sorts of triangles. They're invisible shapes, but they're sort of implied by the relationships of the world around it. And this is the sort of thing we want to see. So um, in between like the top of this, uh, the top of the roof there, there's a triangle there. So when I talked about the left brain and the right brain, um, part of the reason there is, is that when I talk about left brain and right brain, um, the left brain just wants to see these objects. OK, it doesn't tend to see things like sky. 
it doesn't see these empty, what we call negative spaces as having any value. And yet for an artist, when you're drawing, these things are as important as the subject itself. In fact, if you get the negative spaces right, then you've got the object right. And actually your chances of getting these negative spaces to observe them more accurately. Um, let's just get rid of that. So. So when I start this, I could start thinking, well, how do I draw this building? OK, um, but equally, I could start to create a negative space. So I tune into this space. Now, I might not draw it 100 percent accurately, but I try to see this shape, the sky, before I see the building, you see? And let's just imagine that's a shape there. OK, so if I draw that, let's go over here. So if I roughly sketch this out. OK, so I'm looking to draw this shape. OK, so it comes up, down, down. OK, then we're looking at this also, like, how does it relate to the ground and the sky? So it creates it's not quite as low as that. That's why you and Uglo had all these little dots like that. So that would then come across like so. Then this creates a, a little um, negative space here. Something like that. So there's a negative space like that. Okay, then tuning back into the shape that I mentioned. You see, so what I've done is I've, I've got this shape. So that's given me, that has sort of defined somewhat um, this other bit. Now, what I could do here is just to sort of show you. That. So those buildings stay quite small. So that sort of divides into two there, which sort of tells me where the road comes. Like that. OK, then drop a line down there. That would tell me where that comes like so. Then going back to this negative space, remember we've got that little square there. You can imagine that as a little square of sky. OK, so you can see this space, that negative space is shorter than I've drawn it there. OK, so that would come like so. So now I've done that, now that gives me the tools where I could then start to sort of roughly work out where this building sort of sits. So top of the, uh, top of that roof comes there. And so on. So I would do my drawing. I'll just do a little bit more just because I don't want to look Make it too bad. So we've got a little window there. Now you'll notice there actually the more I speed up, the less I'm looking. So that's going against what I'm actually telling you to do. Don't speed up. Try to do that. I mean, obviously, I'm trying to speed up because uh, I'm aware that you're watching me. Um, but you need to take your time with this. And it's actually you're actually going against the grain. Um, you what you want to do is just to draw objects as they are, as you see them. But we're trying to see how they relate to the world around them. OK, so I think if you can do some of the exercises that I set at the end of this class, 
Um, you can then apply them when you do your either your morning exercises or whether you go out and do a bit of sketching in the day. You're going to apply some of this theory and uh, this will give you the foundation. So last week we talked about the primary thing, which is to draw as often as possible, to make it a habit, to get the sketchbook out and to keep drawing. Um, but this week we're going to be focusing on looking and observation. Now, some of you uh, will be aware that last week I talked a little bit about materials. So also this week I've made a little video just showing you some of the, uh, the sort of sketching tools that I use when I go out and about or I'm sketching at home. So I hope you find some of that useful. Anyway, so there we go. So that's uh, that's drawing. So if we can get this down, um, it's going to make our, our sketching more interesting. We're going to get more engaged not necessarily with the subjects that we're drawing, but with the act of observation itself. So I want you to try to tune into that particularly this week and uh, try to notice the degree to which you're actually looking at your subjects whilst you're drawing them. OK, and try it out with a variety of subjects um, as the week unfolds. Anyway, so as usual, I look forward to seeing what you do by the end of the week and uh, I will see you soon. So thanks a lot. Bye.